Hello, listeners, and welcome back to The Alicia Show. I am super excited. You know, I always say this, but this is an exciting time for me because this guest that I have sitting with me on my virtual couch today is a friend, a previous peer of mine. We used to work together and I know her as Leo, but I am going to introduce her as Leonora and I want you, Leonora, to tell the listeners and the visual people who are watching this as well, who you are and what you do. Well, thank you so much for inviting me onto your show, Alicia. Really, really excited to be here. So yeah, just to introduce myself briefly, my name is Leonora Paul. And yes, I worked with Alicia previously. And I've made some changes in my life in the sense that I've realized I had that aha moment. We have realized that there's more to life and I'm meant for more, right? It's almost that moment where I want the spotlight to shine on me. And what I mean by that is this is my moment to just be my authentic self and take care of me, myself. It's all about that self-care, building Mm -hmm. that confidence, building your Mm self-worth. And so I decided to study and become a clinical hypnotherapist. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm so passionate about it because it's my chance not only to help myself in terms of my well-being, but helping people out there. And one of the areas I do focus on is anxiety and depression. And that's huge at the moment. Just some stats. I was looking at some stats and they're saying that according to the World Health Organization, it's about 260 million people globally who suffer with some sort of anxiety disorder. And that's probably growing on a daily basis. That's staggering, right? Leo, when you say that, that makes me really sad because a lot of times we don't even realize the loops that we're going in and out of, or the fact that we might be in fight or flight all the time. Exactly. So for me, having you on the show was really important because it's worlds apart from what we used to do. Yeah. When we worked together, we were both in project management. So I really want to know, I'm very curious to know why you decided to take this path. Yeah. Well, I started having some menopausal symptoms and it was okay. I was coping, but then it kind of coincided when I turned 50. I was really, really spoiled. My partner took me to the Maldives in Dubai for two Ooh. weeks a day. Yeah, really <laughs> spoiled. <laughs> we love him. Yes. That coincided with when COVID, so my birthday was in March, oh. and yeah, I was in my intellectual mind, oh, let's just go, I'm going yes. to enjoy this, right? I didn't even think about COVID. And then we flew from mm-hmm. the Maldives to Dubai, and we managed to have about two good days, and then all of a sudden, everything started closing down. So you were, we were in Dubai you were in just Dubai? before the lockdown happened in the UK, okay, that week before. And everything started closing down. And so we couldn't really enjoy ourselves. We had all of these wonderful plans and we couldn't do any of it. And so we were forced to sit in the hotel room and watch the news, right? And so it's that loop, that news, all of this bad news. And all of a sudden I could just feel my anxiety rising I could almost feel a panic attack coming on. Mm. And I was like, what's going on? And then we decided that we were going to come home early and we arranged it. And thank goodness we did, because then the first lockdown happened a couple of days later. So we arrived back home, I think it was the Saturday morning, and lockdown was on the Monday. And it was a bit of a slippery slope because it was that constant bad news all of the stats of what was happening in Italy, all of the deaths, what was happening in the UK. And all of a sudden, my anxiety started getting worse and worse. Associated with the menopause, but Mm, compounded compounded by this. 
And then it slowly, slowly, I slipped into quite a bad depression to the sense that I couldn't get off the couch. There were days when I didn't shower. And I'm going to say it as it is. Yeah. I didn't shower for two or three days. I didn't move off my couch for two or three days. It got so bad, Alicia, that I would eventually shower and I wouldn't have the strength to comb the knots out of my hair. And so it mattered. It really mattered and mattered and mattered. And over a couple of months, I eventually had to go to the hairdresser and they had to cut all my hair at the back of my head out. I literally had all just basically almost shaven at the back and I could just save this part of my hair here. And then I realized I had to do something. And that's when I started looking at alternatives because I did speak to my GP, but the first thing they did was offer me an antidepressant. And I have nothing against antidepressants. That right. It has its place. Yes, right? it does. But I knew deep down in my gut that wasn't the right thing for me. Mm-hmm. And so I started doing some research and I came across hypnotherapy and the benefits of it. And so I called up a lovely, lovely James by the name of Chris O'Connor. And that was it for me. It just was the best decision I ever made. And yeah, it just got me back onto thinking positively. My anxiety just eased, came out of the depressed state and just started enjoying and loving life again. Yeah. Right? And so I thought, well, there's got to be more to this. And so I decided to study it. And yeah, that's what I'm doing now. I'm loving it. So how long did it take you from mm. being in that depressed state where you couldn't get off your yeah. couch? to so, being okay yeah I would say after about six sessions with wow. Chris wow yeah I could see a marked difference in myself now that's not to say that hypnotherapy is this magic wand no 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 yeah I mean you as the person have to do the work it. It. yeah you're gonna want it right you're gonna want to have those positive outcomes And you also have to take part in that process and do the steps. Mm -hmm. And I did that. And it really, really did help me overcome that anxiety. But at the same time, it's not something you go, okay, I did that. Now that's it. You have to just keep on working at it. Should we maybe have a look at how the brain works? Yeah, that would be really good. That would be a really good segue yeah. as to the connections between the, the connection. Yeah, exactly. And the anxiety. Yeah. Now, because for me, once I understood how the brain works mm-hmm. and what was happening as to yeah. why this anxiety, why these panic attacks, that was kind of the aha moment for mm. me. And it's basically. If you just visually think of draw a circle, mm-hmm. okay, and that circle represents your brain, and then you draw a line at the top part of that circle, and that top part represents your conscious part of your mind, the intellectual part of your mind. Now, life sometimes just has the way of throwing these curveballs at yeah. us, right? We know we, about curveballs. Yeah. Right. We all have challenges. Mm-hmm. We all have times in our life that are bit unhappy, some tragedy, whatever Mm. it is. But why is it that some people can manage that? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that's because they're operating from that intellectual part of their brain. Okay. Okay. So they are able to look at the situation and they can assess it. Because they're operating from that part of the brain, it's a positive mind. They can think about it in logical steps and think, well, okay, that part I don't have control over. There's nothing I can do. This part I do have control over. What actions do I need to take? And they can think about it logically and rationally and they can deal with it. But there's another part of the brain. So if you think about that line, the part below it, yeah, that's what we know as the original primitive part of our brain. Right. And it's exactly what you mentioned earlier, that fight, flight, freeze part. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know. Let's think of an example. Let's say 
we both leave here today and we run into a bear. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not that, there are no bears in the UK, but let's just <laughs> imagine that for a moment. Or back in the day, caveman, if you ran into a saber-toothed tiger, whatever it is, okay. So what would happen if you ran into a bear? I would freeze and then I would be moonwalking backwards. <laughs> Get out of its way. Right? There we go. So that's your reaction, right? <laughs> I tell you how I would react. Oh, my God. I would be like, uh-huh. My heart rate would yeah. be increasing. My palms would be setting. My stomach would probably be churning and I'd be off. As fast <laughs> as I could run, I would be out of it. Okay, so that's definitely the flight. Some people, well, I don't know if they were probably stupid enough to try and fight the bear off. Some people would try that. It's not me. Not me. There's one of those reactions, right? Yes. If that actually happened, one of those responses, and generally the most common response would be to get out of there. Yes. That would be appropriate and you'd be happy about that. But now let's think about today's world. Mm. Right? The kind of the world that we are operating in now. We don't have polar bears in the back of our garden. No. What do we have? Like bank statements arriving at the end of the month, energy bills increasing, food Mortgage. bills, mortgages increasing, fights maybe with our partner because how do we try and save money? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Challenges and stress in the workplace, yeah. whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same, is if you're not in the intellectual part of your brain, if you're operating from that primitive part, you're going to react in the same way. Yeah. Either you're going to get angry, it's everybody else's fault, yes. not yours, it's that victim role. Yes, yes. Or you're going to go, I don't want to deal with this, right? Mm -hmm. You want to put the duvet cover over your head and yeah. you just want to block out the world and that's okay. That's kind of the depression which is definitely what happened to me. Or you have the anxiety reaction where it's just like, I don't know how to deal with this. Yeah. Okay. Well, the question then is, why do we have this anxiety developing? Mm. Okay. I mean, that's the logical question. Well, that yeah. was the question I asked Chris. Okay, so you told me all of that. Yes. So he said, well, think about this, Lenora. If you are operating from the negative part of your brain, which is the primitive part of your brain, right? You are encouraged to look at everything negatively. Mm. You don't look at anything that's happening in your life in a positive way, even if there are really good things that are happening. Yeah. Yes. Everything is seen in a negative light. And so it's kind of like a vicious cycle. So the more you think in a negative way, the more you're forced to be in your primitive brain, and it, the cycle just goes on and on. And so the anxiety continues. It's crazy, isn't it? Because I think for me, what I've heard you explain as well from your perspective is that you were going through the menopause changes, yeah. the hormone changes, and then yeah. obviously COVID hit and yeah. everything was at a standstill and so forth. And so everything was compounded. And there were so many people that also had to look after family, friends, younger people, older people, and so forth. And then we've been living with that mm -hmm. throughout these last couple of years. And then we are now saying we're breathing that relief, the ones that are still here, we've made it, but then we don't know what else we can do to let go of some of those anxious feelings that may come back up. Yeah. So yes. For me, in my head, I'm thinking, well, what are some of those common signs and symptoms of the stress and acts and anxiety feelings that we should be aware of because for some people they just don't know that yeah they're yeah. living in that state of fight or flight on yeah. a day to day yeah exactly so there are some typical symptoms mm -hmm. and they are things like people may bite their nails people may suffer with migraines headaches you may kind of find that you're sweating or you have heart palpitations. Mm -hmm. It could also be there's links to IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, That's interesting. because there's that mind-gut relation. Yeah. And I know the moment when I have maybe too much stress in my life because 
I definitely have that impact. Yeah. And then I know we're all different in the way we react. Some people may try and control the emotions that they're feeling by overeating. Mm -hmm. Some people could use alcohol. And one of the biggest signs is sleep. I was going to say that. (laughs) Because I know that from as soon as something is not sitting well in my own lifestyle, the sleep goes, I'm not as careful as I usually am with regards to what I'm eating. And I mean, I've recently given up drink, but occasionally that can slip back in and I get really snappy. Yeah. I'm a very irritable, I lose patience Patience. quite quickly. And I do think that people go through seasons of that and they're just like, oh, that's where I'm at. But some of us don't realize that we're there all of the time. That's right. And that can cause long-term illnesses as well. That's right. So there's a lovely metaphor that we use. We use this with our clients in solution-focused hypnotherapy. And it's what we call a stress bucket. Right. So just imagine a bucket and you've got a tap. Yes. Now, obviously, a certain amount of stress. We all have stress in our life, Mm -hmm. right? And a certain amount is healthy for us. Yes. Okay. It protects us. Yeah. Enables us to react. But when we have too much stress, so think about that uh, tap being opened and drip, drip, drip. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's not even things you, you, we think that they're small things that can't be adding to it, Mm -hmm. but it does. When you're stressing about picking up the kids from school, I've got dinner to do, I've got this, and you've got a things to do list about this long. Without intentionally right, wanting exactly. to add, right, it does. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so we have to be mindful of that. And so what eventually happens is if you're pouring in that into that bucket all the time mm-hmm. and you're not dealing with getting rid of any of that, it will eventually overflow. Yeah. And that's when that anxiety and panic attack happens, okay? And so if we go back to the sleep, and you rightly said, like, sleep is so important. With your little girl, did you notice when she, or even now, when she sleeps, do you ever notice, like, her eyelids kind yes. of yes. flickering? Okay, and that's what's called REM sleep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she's processing everything that's happened during the day. Now, REM is really important. But the problem is when a bucket overflows, REM sleep can only handle about 20% of what's um, in that bucket. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, Alicia, like you're feeling a lot of stress, you've got a lot going on, and all of a sudden you'll wake up 3 o'clock in the morning, boom. That was me this morning. This morning, okay. Yeah, that was me this morning, and I know the reasons why. I'm on my period, cycle, husband's too hot, daughter gets in the bed, breaks my sleep I'm pacing at three o'clock in the morning yeah right (laughs) yeah and you're struggling and then you quite you feel horrible you feel but irritable and everything you try you just can't get back to sleep and I mean you've had your little girl you know the difference between that waking up Mm -hmm. and say when Alessandra used to wake you up when she needed feeding yes there's a difference right Yes. You could go back to sleep straight away after you'd yeah. given her right? breastfed her yeah. or gave her a bottle, whatever yeah. you did. And that's because when you're waking up and it's that irritability, you've got too much in your stress bucket. Yeah. Ooh. And that's one of the first signs that, okay, you need to try and get this under control. And so what are the ways that we can yes, do please. that? <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my next question. I was like, help yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. What are the ways that we can do that? So this is where hypnotherapy comes in. And that in the sense that we spoke about the negative mind. Yes. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is start thinking positively. Mm -hmm. We have to change the way we think about things. We all have this internal dialogue. We probably speak with ourselves more Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than anybody else. Yes. Yeah. And if you've got this constant dialogue in your head that's negative, 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 self-criticizing, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, that's never going to work, I'm never going to be able to afford that, the world's awful, 
Mm. Blah, 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 blah. And so it goes on. Right. You're going to be stuck in your primitive mind. Yes. Yeah. But if you change that in a dialogue and you start saying, okay, mm, yeah, maybe I'm not great at this right now, but let me try. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The price of food has gone up. But you know what? I don't have to eat meat every day. Yeah. I can make really healthy soups. Mm -hmm. What is the, some of the other things that we criticize ourselves about? That meeting. We think about that meeting. We think <laughs> everything's going to go wrong with that meeting. We live through 51 meetings. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. so it's just changing how we think about things and a really good way of doing that. I found this helped me a lot personally is journaling. I love journaling. Yeah. And people go, oh, oh journaling. You no know, yeah. rolling eyes. Yeah. yeah, rolling eyes. But no, really, just try it. And it doesn't have to be every day, even if it's a couple of times during the week. It's just to get yourself into a habit about what's been good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be big things. It could be small things. I enjoyed a cup of tea with my partner this morning. I heard the birds singing as I woke up this morning. I text my friend and it was just so lovely hearing from her. Whatever it is, yeah. it doesn't have to be big. Just all the tiny little things that are good in our life. Mm -hmm. And then I found when I read back at the end of the week of all those good things, I was like, wow, that was really great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's no room for negativity here. No. And I think also just, I mean, I am a fan of morning pages. And yeah. So I just do a brain dump of everything that's in my head as well because yeah. that can start your day or yeah. feeling really negative as well. Yeah. So I love just getting everything out on paper. Yeah. Because I feel like that just, it's like a weight has lifted. Yeah. No, exactly. And then the other thing is we all have our to do lists. Yes. Our things, right? And sometimes, I mean, I've got my partner bought me this lovely little remarkable. And so what yes. I do every day, and you don't have to have that. You could just have a little notepad. You could have whatever you want. And it's kind of just breaking it down into manageable chunks. Because sometimes we think, oh, gosh, 20 things to do. I'm not going to manage that. No. Right. And so it becomes overwhelming. But if you say, OK, I've only got two hours today. Mm -hmm. What are the two most important things? Prioritize that. That's what I can manage. That just takes the stress out of it. And so yeah. we don't then experience that, those anxious moments. Yeah. It's all about the plan of making it easy for yourself. <laughs> there comes the project management, right, in us. There we go. <laughs> and it's all about self-love, right? It is. Because that's the other thing is... Sometimes we all about, we feel guilty about taking out the time mm -hmm. for ourselves. Everybody else needs our attention, work, our partners, our home, our job, whatever that may be. But how do we give if we are running on empty? 100%. Yeah. I tell everybody that will listen that you're the most important. Yeah. In this dynamic. Because yeah. a lot of the time, we are the people that are holding it all together. Yeah. And so we need to be mindful of that. We need to ensure that we're looking after ourselves. That's right. It's about reframing our thoughts. And that's where hypnotherapy helps. So people say to me, okay, well, I kind of get the tools. Yes. I get that. But how does hypnotherapy actually Should work? Me? How does that actually help me? So if we just think about this, so... Think about that conscious part of your brain again. Are you at the stage yet where you've taught Alessandra how to tie her shoelaces? Or... Not yet. We're coming. You're coming yeah, to that yeah, part. Yeah. So when she gets to that part, think about it. She's going to have to listen to everything you say. She's going to have to concentrate. You're going to have to have patience with her. She's going to have to have patience with herself. But she'll get it. Yeah. She'll eventually get it. And then it'll be, oh, that's easy peasy, mom. Yeah. Yeah. And she's, it's yeah. done. And then that action moves from your conscious part of your brain into your subconscious because then you don't yes. even think about it. It's almost like blinking, breathing. We don't think about that. We just, we just do. We just do, right? So with hypnotherapy, it's all about relaxation. 
Mm -hmm. if you think about that barrier, that line between the conscious part and the unconscious part, with the relaxation, we help kind of relax that barrier. And so then during the hypnosis, it then allows me to work with the client depending on what the issue is that they've come to me for. And with some hypnotic suggestions, we are able to then reprogram some of those programs. Now, I refer to it as a program because what I mean by that is we have certain beliefs, we have those negative thoughts. So let's say somebody has come to me because of confidence. Yes. Right? They would have certain beliefs about themselves that are based on their past, but it's based on experiences. Yes. Okay. And the primitive brain protects you. Mm -hmm. So it wants the best for you. So you are protecting yourself by going almost, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, no, I better not do that. I better mm. not try and do yes, that. Yes. What happens if I fail? Mm -hmm. So the primitive brain will say, yeah, you're right, Lenora, don't do that. Don't, no, just cocoon yourself up. Yes. Put that little security blanket around you. That's what it does. Yes. So with hypnotherapy, we come in and we say, no, 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 <laughs> come on. We're going to smash that program. Do you yes. really think that? And we'll say to the clients, well, what proof do you have that you're not good enough? Where is your proof that you can't? go skydiving where is your proof that you can't be the ceo of that company where is your proof that you can't be promoted to that job that you want yes yeah and so it's about changing that and we can reprogram that with those positive suggestions mm -hmm. i mean i'm all in i had hypnotherapy as part of my birthing plan yeah because although i was super excited to have yeah my daughter, I was very scared to give birth. Yeah. So I needed that because I was getting to that stage where I was feeling like I was going to have some kind of panic attack in labor. And I just didn't want it to go that way. Yeah. And it was the best thing that I did. Yeah. Because I had an anchor. Yeah. And I didn't even have to call upon it because I was in that nice level of relaxation and zen yeah and you were probably thinking about that experience in a positive way yes. right you weren't thinking about all the things that were going to go wrong you were probably thinking well yes I may experience some pain but I'm going to have my beautiful daughter yes. at the end of us yeah so it's all about the positive thoughts mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would have helped you through as well yeah yeah, yeah. no absolutely so if anybody is suffering, and that's what this podcast is about, really, right, yeah. is ensuring that people know that there are different ways yeah, and different tools that they can use. Yeah. And yeah. so I love the fact that you have fully embraced this and that hypnotherapy found you and you found hypnotherapy because yeah. you are definitely one of the warmest people that I've met to be able to hold that space. Yeah. Well, for, thank you for, for that. People, for people. And I'm being 100% sincere in that. Yeah. We've known each other for a very long time. So we've been in and out of contact. But like when we said, when we were back in contact and we said, it just felt like yesterday, that's how yes. it felt. Yeah. So I want to just in address some of the misconceptions because when I first found out about hypnotherapy, my mind went straight to Paul McKenna and I was like, I don't want to go under and not know what I'm doing. Exactly. And there are quite a few myths. I mean, the first thing you hear people saying, well, because they think about stage hypnosis. Yes. And about from that entertainment point yes. of view. Oh, gosh, she's going to make me cluck like a chicken. Yes. She's going to make me do stupid things on stage. Now, that's not what we do at all. Okay. That's purely from an entertainment point mm -hmm. of view. If you just think about hypnosis as I can't control your mind, mm -hmm. yeah. I can't make you do things that you don't want to do. Yeah. I can't always say, oh, Alicia, can you just strip, baby, and do it and don't dance? You know, I can't do any of yeah. that. No, I can't yeah. say to my partner, could you just give me your pin number to your yeah. partner? You know, take all of his money. I can't do that sort of yeah. shit. It's all about the relaxation, mm -hmm. okay? So 
I often say to my clients, just think about hypnosis as the most relaxed you'll ever be. And if I could maybe equate to, as I'm starting to get older, one of the things I will do is I love white noise of the television. Oh my goodness. Yes, <laughs> white noise. I go to sleep to meditation. Like, is it, oh, older vintage? Oh, I don't situation. know. <laughs> I don't know, actually, but. Yeah, I'm definitely. I like it. Kind of, yeah, it's soothing for me, right? And so, for me personally, if I could explain what hypnosis feels like, yes. it would be like falling asleep in front of the television. You can hear the television in the background, or you can hear that podcast or that meditation in the background, but you're in that lovely slumber and you're aware of what's happening. But if somebody tries to wake you up, you're like, Oh, just leave me. Oh, it's just lovely. It's yeah. that sort of feeling. Yeah. Or maybe another example would be, I don't know if you've maybe been driving and it's a lovely summer's day and you've got the music on. Yes. And you're just driving along and it's just that feeling. You think, oh, how did I actually get from point A to point B? Yeah. Without <laughs> yeah. being dangerous. Without you know, being, being yes. dangerous. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It's that relaxed feeling. And that's exactly what it is. So no, I can't control your mind. I can't make you do anything you don't want to do. And this is also the beauty of technology. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm also finding is that sometimes doing hypnotherapy sessions online, yes. where the client is just really relaxed in their own home, in their own environment, that does tend to help as well. Maybe. Because... If you are going to, say, visit somebody in their rooms and like, let's say it's a female client with a male hypnotherapist or yeah. with children or whatever that may yeah. be, doing it that way it does have a lot of advantages yeah. because yeah. with the client feeling really comfortable, it does help them just go into that relaxed state a lot quicker, mm -hmm. which helps with the whole process. That's a really, really good point because, yes, Wow. Yeah. Just thinking out that in person yeah. situation could really help somebody relax yeah. even yeah. deeper and just not have any qualms about yeah. just relaxing yeah. and maybe even falling asleep. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So technology really, really, really does help in those situations. And for certain clients, I find that the online sessions are better than in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to your clientele and mm -hmm. the type of hypnotherapy that you do, do you just specialize in anxiety and stress or are there ever? Yeah. So generally, because of my journey with menopause, yeah. I am focusing on helping women because the stats with woman leaving the workplace because of oh, confidence, yes. self-worth, a brain fog, yes. all of these symptoms that they're not coping with is staggering. I mean, it, yes. it's, it's just absolutely crazy. I totally agree. I'm reading some white papers at the moment. Yeah. All about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm really passionate about helping women see mm -hmm. this next stage of their life as an exciting next phase. Yes. This isn't the end. This is an amazing next phase of your life. Just to help them realize that and give them the tools to work through that. Mm -hmm. And I'm really passionate about that. Mm -hmm. So that's the one area. And then the other area is with both of us coming from a corporate environment, mm -hmm. anxiety and stress in the workplace mm -hmm. is through the roof. I realized just how many people when I was working in the corporate environment, how many people weren't coping. And the problem is sometimes there's that fear factor that people yes. don't want to admit to it, yes. even though the big companies out there, well-being programs are, and they're doing a good job. They're getting better. They're getting better. It's a good way of putting yes. it. But there's still people who are not sure how to deal with it. There's all of that pressure and stress on them. And so if I can help people in that way to get to cope, it's that coping strategies, mm -hmm. reframe their thoughts and just be good at their jobs because they've got that out of the way. 
then I think that's really helpful. Super helpful because I think yeah. you've had the experience. And I think that's yeah. a lot of what people need to recognize is that a lot of the times when we step out of a certain situation, we do that and then we can reflect back. Yes. Right. And we can yes. come with our experiences and our expertise and our new yes. knowledge to yeah. really help others because we don't want them to suffer. So that's I really true. applaud you because, I mean, you know me, you've listened to the podcast a lot. I do concentrate in that midlife because it's important. Yeah. And I saw a lot of the times when I was working in corporate people leaving, you never really add it up until you've got that time to reflect That's or right. that you get to that certain age and you're like, oh, yes, that was happening. So exactly, if we can educate people now mm-hmm. and give them tools now, That's right. so that we can have those amazing women leaders in That's the workplace. It. Yeah. yeah, so the one thing I'm also really passionate about is also promoting group sessions yes. because not everybody can afford a one-to-one mm-hmm. session, right? Mm-hmm. So I want to reach as many people out yeah. there to give them the tools and the techniques. So I am in the process of developing some programs where I can have some group sessions and in that way just make it more affordable for people yeah. as well. So watch the space and something that I'm putting into action. The other thing I wanted to mention is at the back of my mind, something that I'm really keen on doing as well. I haven't done it yet, but I myself had fertility problems and wasn't able to have children. And so I've realized that this is another area where there hasn't been too much focus on just helping couples that are going through that stress, that anxiety, okay? And yes, if they are able to have children after that fertility treatment, great. But helping people through that to manage it in order to hopefully have a successful fertility treatment. Then the second point is what about the people who have the fertility treatment and it doesn't work right okay so you've just hit a huge like you can hear my voice yeah this is really important work yeah it is it really is and we need to talk offline about that because I would love to collaborate in any type of way because you know me I had fertility issues as well I think just that anxiety and that stress yeah of you feeling like it's something that you've done within your body that's right people not recognizing that and also the insensitivities of people yeah and then having to deal with your relationship with your partner also and well we can have another whole conversation about absolutely this this subject because we are holding we hold so much I mean yes the men do too but a lot of it falls on us women yeah these are the type of conversations I want to have these are the conversations that are really important these are the conversations that we're not having there are so many business women who are going through fertility issues who can't stop yeah because they've got a business to run they're the main breadwinners there are women that I know personally when I was working in corporate that were going through fertility issues and they could not stop working because they had to pay for the treatments and so forth And they just kept on going and going and going and weren't supported. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's one that I've been giving it some thought. And it's something that I really, this is another focus area for me, because helping people through that stress and anxiety is going to be probably the most valuable thing. And it's all about helping people. It really, really is. That's why I do this work. And that's why I love it and just want to just be there and help people really yeah. just make yeah. their lives better. Yeah. Oh, Leo, <laughs> I knew the tears were going to come at some point. <laughs> so can you tell us what to expect in a session? In yeah. A- so typically session? the initial session is that initial consultation. And I do my initial consultations for free. And the reason for that is I think it's important 
for me to have that initial chat and explain to the person why hypnotherapy, how it's going to help them. Because at the end of the day, if there isn't that buying, and I'm hoping by having that frank conversation, they'll see the benefit of Mm -hmm. that. But I don't want there to be that pressure of finances because it's all about, at the end of the day, helping that person. Yes. So it's discussing what the issue is, what they would like the outcome to be, and then assessing whether I can help that client or not. Because sometimes maybe there'll be certain clients where I think, well, maybe I'm not the right fit. Yes. And I'll probably refer that to a colleague. Okay. Yes. So it's all about establishing that rapport. Yes, it is. Then the follow-up sessions are, it's kind of devising a plan as to how we will achieve those outcomes Mm -hmm. and then working through that. So just depending what it is. So for example, if a client comes to me with a phobia, maybe, let's say it's heights, that I could do in the initial consultation and three sessions. Mm -hmm. If it's somebody with anxiety, it depends on how much work is needed how much work the client's putting in. So that can take from anything from, say, 6 to 12 sessions. Yes. Okay, just depending. And so it's just establishing that and then working through it. And it's all about the tools and the techniques that are given to address that particular issue. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess for me, I mean, it worked 100% for Mm -hmm. me, but there may be listeners that may be thinking, well, is this really successful? Does yeah. it really work? Yeah. So I can only go on that it worked for me. Yes. That's first and foremost. So I believe in this whole process because I know from firsthand experience how it changed my life. Yes. Right? And only for the positive. And I'm loving life again yes. and enjoying this menopause, this next stage in my life. The fact that during this menopause that I've changed careers looking right. at other ways of living it's all about that it's just yeah. embracing it yeah and the other thing is just going on what the clients that I have yes. seen the feedback that I get from them and how their lives have changed and that's what I kind of base it on that yes, yes it works yes and that's it definitely great, works that's a great feedback to have yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh as I said we could talk for ages so is there anything that you would recommend that if somebody was feeling stressed and anxious and they didn't have the time or they mm-hmm. wanted to get out of that state ASAP is there any self-help techniques that you have in your toolbox yeah so the one thing is relaxation is really important mm-hmm. okay and I do have a relaxation recording fantastic I could yes, give please. your listeners okay all they need to do is just email me their name and the email address and I can send that recording on to them and that really will help just relax and I would suggest that they listen to that maybe in the evening before they get to bed or just flying off now for yourself right yeah. and if you just a word of advice, don't listen to while you're driving or yes, yes. any operating, any machine or anything <laughs> like that. Or listen to it while somebody's driving and they can hear it. Yes. Because that's important. But even if you listen to it before you go to bed and you don't listen to the whole thing, that's okay because mm. your subconscious mind is listening to it. It's going to help you just reframe any negative thoughts and get that stuff out of your stress bucket that's and help you sleep. Okay. The other thing is definitely mindfulness, Mm -hmm. right? And that's spoken about a lot, but really be mindful. So what do I mean by mindful is if you feel that there's a lot going on, Mm -hmm. plates full, breathing is probably, it is so important. And there's a breathing technique. There are quite a few. I mean, you can go on the internet and you can Google some breathing techniques. There's one called box breathing yes yes yeah and it's just like a box so it's breathing Mm -hmm. yeah and you count in your own mind you count and some people use five some people say seven whatever you feel comfortable with so it's breathing and then hold let's say for the count of seven yeah breathe out for the count of seven 
and hold out for the count of seven. And just repeat that box seven times. Mm -hmm. And by the end of that, it's amazing the impact that breathing can do. Mm -hmm. And just, yeah, okay. Now let me think about it rationally. Yes. Operate from my primitive brain. Let me try and operate from my intellectual brain. Yeah. Yes. So it's none of that fight, flight, freeze reaction. So that's really important. The other thing is in hypnotherapy, we talk about the three P's. Mm -hmm. And these three P's are positive thinking, Mm -hmm. right? It's all about your thoughts. Every time you find yourself thinking negatively, stop yourself and think, how can I change that thought into a positive thought? Yes. So that's another technique. The other thing is positive actions. Now, what do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. And this goes back to the self-care that we were talking about, right? It's little things like take a hot bath, Mm -hmm. read a book, Mm -hmm. do some gardening. Do the things you enjoy to just not concentrate on those negative things, but actually do something nice. And the third thing, which I think is the problem today in this technology and that we all focus on our phones. My partner and I were just talking about it the other day. It was his sister's birthday. And both of us just what's up to for her birthday. Mm. Yeah, and how many of us do that? We do that now, don't we? We do, right? Or we text somebody. How many of us actually pick up the phone yeah. and talk to somebody or actually wish somebody on the phone. Right. I love a conversation. Right? Yeah. That's where you get that connection. That's it. So the third thing that we underestimate is our interactions with others. Mm-hmm. It's making the time to go and have a coffee with a girlfriend, yeah. making the time to just sit for 10 minutes with your partner and have a cup of tea, picking up the phone and just saying hi to somebody, just, just thinking about you. That is really, really important. So if you concentrate on those three things, that will definitely make a difference for you. <laughs> Leah, this has been so good. And as I said, like you are a wealth of information, the way that you articulated everything so beautifully. My brain is like this. <laughs> there is so many other questions that I could ask, but I think we'll just have to have you back. <laughs> well, that would be absolutely lovely to be back and continue having these conversations where we can help people. Yes, yes, 100%. But before we leave today, I'd love for you to tell the listeners and the viewers where they can find you and how they could work with you. Yeah, so you can find me. So my business is called Lenora Paul Hypnotherapy. So you can look me up and there is a contact form on my website. I'm also on social media, Lenora Paul Hypnotherapy on Instagram or Facebook. You can DM me there. And if you want to call me, you can do that and we can set up a free consultation and how I can help you. Fantastic. Thanks so much for being here with me. I'm super, super excited. I'm so happy that we are still in touch. I know. Because as I said, it's been a while and yeah. I'm really, really happy that you've found something that you're so passionate about and where you can really, really be an impact to others. I cannot wait to hear some more success stories. Oh, great. Well, thank yeah. you for having me. I've really, really enjoyed my time with you. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Okay, listeners, if you know anybody who would benefit from this conversation that Leonora and I just had, please, please, please share this episode with them. Also remember that Leo is offering you a free consultation. So go ahead to her website and book yourself onto a call with her and see if she is the right person for you. And then don't forget to like and subscribe so that you always hear the Alicia show. Anyway, bye-bye for now. And I will see you next week. Oh,